TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man, let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Your discretion is advised, I do not glorify sensationalize or condone any of the act stories told in this. I am here simply to educate myself and others on the history and current state of issues around the world. This is intended for mature audiences only. Read this. All right. Like I was saying. Uh, don't forget we are partnered with the Blueprint. You know what I'm saying? The link to this will be down in the description below. Uh, if you're looking for any of my old videos, it's over here on my Facebook. And don't forget we got the Patreon. I just did a video for uh, Only Fools and Horses. That'll be up soon. Uh, and we start a new show this week, so... Let's get into this, though. This is from Sky Boy. Sky Boy. Let me subscribe, man. Hit that like button. Shout out to my first responders for doing the same, hitting that like button on this video. Without y'all, man. Without that early push. Who knows, man. And just to keep it frank, man, I'm still... I don't know if I'm sick or I got allergies, but I don't know what it is, but it's bad, I've had this a week straight now. Sick of it. The deadly war in northwest London. CSB versus SGB? Alright guys, I'm back with another one and we're in familiar waters. The borough of Brent, home to some of London's most deadliest gangs and at one point, the capital of gun crime. Today we'll be focusing on two particular sets, Stonebridge and Church Road. A war that has been active for almost two decades. I'll be touching slightly on the set's history, but rest assured I'll be focusing mainly on the modern string of violence between these two sets. The past history is a bit murky and many people disagree on certain events, so aspects of it is best to be left alone, especially when I can't verify certain details. Tonight, That's a fact. If you can't verify, then shh. Because that's almost, still, that's almost snitching. We get an unusual glimpse into why the war on drugs is failing. Jamaica is one of this country's closest friends and favored trading partners. We give Jamaica more U.S. aid than any other Caribbean country. We also export a voracious appetite for drugs. So, Jamaican organized crime is flooding this country with tons of cocaine and marijuana. And along with the drugs, Jamaican gangs, or posses as they're called, have imported... And along with the drugs, Jamaican gangs, or posses as they're called never heard it called that i've never actually called, heard a group of people called a posse ever in my life not one time All right. called have imported a brand of cruelty that's second to none now let's take it way back to the 90s winston harris aka escobar and his fellow yardies relocated from jamaica into new york city they were known as the lock city crew there was an american dream on the table and everyone wanted a piece of it they started distributing drugs in Queens, however, and ev the best editor on YouTube. I'm trying to come for my spot, my boy. Everyone wanted a piece of it. They started distributing drugs in Queens. However, after several murders and drug-related crimes, Escobar and his gang fled. Queens. I'm not gonna lie. I went to the UK. I mean, not the UK. <laughs> I went to uh, New York one time, right, a few years back, and this is how it was. Honestly, almost it was like people was on the street. It was some people like on a set of steps with a boom box. People was jumping rope in the streets. Like I was like, wow. And I was in the hood. I was in like Brooklyn or something. I, f I forgot where I was. It was a hood though. Um, and I was like, dang. Chicago, we could never do this. People do not be outside just kicking it like this. It was, it was a beautiful thing to see for me at least. However, after several murders and drug-related crimes, Escobar and his gang fled to London to avoid the FBI, one of the rare occasions where gang members understood when to stop rolling the dice. Once they touched down in London, they settled into Brent, where they recruited members from all over the borough and imposed their violent style of dealing with issues, causing them to grow very quickly and to take over the borough. Now onto the 2000s. A new generation of youngsters forming their own sets came into play. The Fugs of Stonebridge TLS. and the Church Road Soldiers. The hatred between Nine. these two sets was so severe that innocents who lived in opposing estates would also be targeted. 
Kaiser Osman, <coughs> also known as Ozzy, a resident from the Stonebridge Park estate, was bullied by younger members of the Church Road soldiers in and outside of school. Despite Ozzy being a civilian, he and his family was that chunks? My bad. Let's focus. Which is in and outside of school. Despite Ozzy being a civilian, he and his family would often make reports to the police claiming to be a victim of the bullying. Members of the gang would purposely bang on his door screaming, I will kill you. They were surrounding his house armed with knives, shouting these intimidating remarks regularly. One day, he you know who they sound like? Hold on. was seen walking out of the community center in the Church Road estate. A few members of the gang approached him. They began assaulting him and he was stabbed right in the chest. This sounds like almost the exact same story as Tuka. If y'all if y'all don't know the story of Tuka from you know everybody, Lil Dirk and all of that gang, they always say that guy's name. If y'all know his backstory, this is almost the same story. It's very similar. <laughs> hey, he was seen walking out of the community center in the Church Road estate. A few members of the gang approached him. They began assaulting him and he was stabbed right in the chest. He died shortly after due Very to his similar. injuries. Members were arrested, some as young as 12 years old, where one member was charged with his manslaughter. In 2001, Shakar Anderson, aka Cash, was a talented musician who was about to be signed by dancehall artist and legend Movado. One day, Cash got into a sticky situation with a Stonebridge member named Shorty. Unfortunately, the situation escalated and Shorty shot Cash at point blank rage and robbed him. Cash almost died from his injuries, but thankfully survived. Cash was left with nothing he put no classic movies in. I love this movie. but trauma and anger and vowed to avenge his wounds. In 2002, famous UK rapper Dizzy Rascal held an event at a nightclub to tackle gun crime. The irony is that Cash and Zeno both attended the event armed, Zeno being the older brother of Nines, a very important individual that will make a name for himself in the future. Also in attendance was Shorty, the man who almost took Cash's life a year prior, as well as another Stonebridge member named It's a recipe for disaster, my boy. Who made this guest list? Who invited them? What was they on? It ends, man. Cash spotted him and instantly shot Shorty in the back of the head. Zeno also saw Enzman and began firing, hitting him in the neck. Enzman attempted to escape, but sadly collapsed outside the nightclub and died. Despite several people witnessing this, no one said a word due to fear, and both murders are unsolved to this day. Now forward to 2007, a pivotal moment in a Northwest London gang culture, the introduction of the bandana movement. Stonebridge linked up with several sets such as South Kilburn, Chalk Hill, and Monks Park. They all flag blue, their rivals flag red. I go into more detail about this in my other video that's on my channel that you should check out. However, Church Road, they stuck with a black flag to distinguish themselves from their rivals. They weren't a part of the link up despite sharing the same rivals and kept to themselves. April 2008, Zeno, aka Wayne Freckleton, was sitting in a barber shop. Freckleton is crazy. Okay. Zeno, aka Wayne Freckleton, was sitting in a barber shop when he was brutally shot and killed by masked gunmen. The gunmen were Ford and Osborne, two Stonebridge members who were later sentenced to life. That was Nine's brother, right? In prison. This vicious attack was a revenge for the double murder Zeno was a part of in 2002. Although it happened a good six years ago, it's a testament to the statement that revenge has no expiry date. I was just about to say that same thing, but you know, I'm on YouTube probation, so I can't even say nothing like that. 2009, Church Road affiliate Pinky had been attending a party inside the local primary school on the Stonebridge Park estate. Hours later, whilst leaving the premises, he was confronted by Stonebridge members, which led to a gunshot being fired. Pinky was hit and later died from his injuries. Stonebridge member Grandad and others were arrested, even going as far as to arrest a schoolboy in connection with a murder. But due to insufficient evidence and no witness coming forth, the case was later dropped and the murder remains unsolved. How was that blanked out? Phil Jenner. I'm the assistant manager. What the hell is this? It's a mayonnaise commercial? 
Oh, my bad. An individual from the Church Road area that goes by Dipset was once spotted by Stonebridge members. They forced him to strip naked and do star jumps, repeatedly smack himself in the face and to scream stone busy. Now this stripping star jumps, I'm gonna assume those are jumping jacks. Business is something I've seen gangs all over the world do. And I generally think it's one way closeted down low homosexual gang members can express their desires whilst disguising it as humiliating an op. Because there's nothing gangster about it. The video was uploaded to nothing. YouTube, but I for some reason agree. you can only hear the audio. Now onto the 2010s, Stonebridge member K Coke was making a name for himself in a rap scene, consistently producing bangers, notably his hit, Are You Alone Fam, which was dedicated to dissing former Stonebridge member Spider, who snitched and relocated outside of London. K Coke also did a fire in the booth and was one of the first artists I've seen hit a million views back then. This was a monumental feat as London didn't have much of a rap scene. Like, this song sits at a pretty 22 million views today. Nah, that's impressive. Ugh. 22 million is impressive for anybody. Now onto the late 2010. K Coke and fellow member Squingy was spotted in a barber shop by Church Road members. K Coke was sitting waiting for his haircut when they ran up on him recording, verbally abusing him, throwing bricks and leaving with his jacket. K Coke stood his ground and jokingly replied, What are you saying? So credit to him for that. Can't buy a heart. What? 30 man K Coke, go. pussy, I go. Churchill, I go. crime scene, one other. Yeah, 30 I man. Go. What? What? Are you saying? What? What? Oh, you what? what? 30 man K Coke. Come on, come on. Now, throughout the next few years, Operation Shouldn't even have posted that. <laughs> Trident, which is a police service unit originally set up in 1998 for the black community as the community-led initiative with the police to tackle gun crime and homicides disproportionately affecting African Caribbean communities. Trident successfully arrested many gang members for firearms and ammunition possession. This helped lower the crime within the borough of Brent, especially within the Halsden area. Gentrification also played a part oh, okay. and had taken an influx as estates were demolished and... Yeah, once gentrification starts, you get <laughs> that's the end rebuilt into council type of crime at least like well you know they're trying to gentrify humble park in chicago right now it's it's, it's happening but it's a slow happen you know what i'm saying they can, it's not like caprini green or a project where you knock the whole thing down and it's, it's gone <laughs> like you can't just do that to humble park because it's not it's a whole entire neighborhood not just a 10 block radius or six block radius or whatever. To homes and flats. Many residents, including gang members, were forced to move out of the area due to high rent and some for criminal convictions. Now come the 2017s and the war was brewing musically. K Coke returned from his hiatus and dropped Little Man and replied to Nine's hit title Trapper of the Year when Nine said, If I had a record deal, I still ain't laying down my weapon. This is a reference to K Coke's song with Rita Ora, where the hook says, Lay down your weapons. K Coke response was said, Lay down your weapons to the kiddies and that. I never laid down mine, I got a fizzy and a Mac. In other words, I was telling the kids to lay down their weapons. I still got mine. K Coke didn't stop there. He crossed the line and talked about Zeno's death, the older brother of Nines who got gunned down in a barbershop. The lyrics read, He got negative. Fuck boy, you're not surty. Your brother died in 06. Now come 2018, the rise of the new generation. Many Fugs of Stonebridge members got locked up in drug offences and firearm charges. This led to the extinction of SGB and made way for the new upcoming generation who <coughs> formed SOS, aka Shoot On Sight. Prominent members included Crash Corn, Little Shanks, Little J. Their alliance with newer generation of the South Kilburn and Chalk Hill Estates, now known as A9 and SSK. Over the years, more alliances have emerged with other gangs such as CGM and LG8. Just like their rivals, Church Road would also usher a new generation of CSB members, which consisted of prominent members such as Chapo, Sav, Q2T, Screamer and many more. Unlike Stonebridge though, the younger generation will keep the name CSB going. They were going to make music and adopt the popular UK drill sound. Now remember Big Keys I talked about earlier? 
where his nephew, Rico Finlayson, was stabbed 10 times in the Church Road area. Thankfully, paramedics managed to save his life. Meanwhile, his father, Justin, has just secured funding to expand a charity that tackles knife crime. In August 2017, the father launched a music outreach project which was a double-decker bus converted into a music studio which picked up gang members from Church Road in the Hardson area in the morning and Stonebridge gang members in the afternoon. He wanted to inspire the youth within the community instead of being on the road committing crimes to channel their... That sounds cool. That's an iffy move right there. That's a... That's a... That's a... That's a... Like, that's a... That's an iffy move is what I'm gonna say. ...emotions into art. On the 31st of May 2018, a 24-year-old man, known locally as Jay, was found with gunshot wounds on Lawrence Avenue at about 8.30pm. He had been shot 11 times with a machine gun. Luckily, he survived the attack. It was reported he had been at the wrong place at the wrong time, and the intended target was his friend, a Fugs of Stonebridge member. 2019, an event took place that added oil to an already raging fire. This would lead to severe upscale and future violence. One day Nice was driving around in his Porsche and had been spotted by Mad Big and AR. After they locked eyes, Nice was chased. This is what led to Nice crashing his car. AR and B caught up with him and stabbed him in his face. AR even recorded him chasing Nines. This was a stupid decision to chase Clout and incriminate himself, which further aided the police. Very stupid. They used the footage as evidence in the courtroom and it was later sentenced for the stabbing. Nines left with a nasty scar that you can see today on his face. On the 5th of July on Harrow Smalls. Road, Monks Park, at around 8.10pm on Friday, Craig Small, aka Smalls, a Stonebridge member and friend of Keiko was gunned down. This was a retaliation for what happened to Nines. When such a name brand an important member such as Nines is attacked, the retaliation always has to be murder. The shooting was caught on CCTV. The shooter creeped up close and an unaware small standing outside the chicken shop was shot at point blank range. And when it looked like the shooter was fleeing, he came back to shoot again while Smalls was lying on the floor. Two things we do not do. I would consider lacking. Standing outside of the food shop. We don't stand outside. We place the order. We go pick up the order. We get back in the car. We go. We don't we don't go to the place, order the food, wait. No 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 no. We even pay for it on the phone. Just give me it. And I don't send myself in, send somebody else in. We don't do that. Second thing is wait outside the nightclubs. Don't do that either. Once it's done, go to the car, leave. Simple. Some arrests were made, including fellow CSB Scraps. rapper and right hand man of nine, Scraps. He was charged on September 12th with perverting the court of justice. The death of Smalls hit Stonebridge heavy. Emotions were high and retaliation was a must. Without any proof, they thought St. Raphael's had involvement in his murder. This led to tits for tats with them. They resorted to taking their anger and frustrations out on any St. Raphael's member they could find. The next day, St. Raphael's GK was shot numerous times while sitting in his car. For that, oh, my, but that's another thing we don't do either. Sit in the car. It's for what? In chill? No, I don't know. Going inside. It's gotta be in constant motion. Fortunately, he only got shot in his arm, was rushed to hospital and discharged. Both Skeng and M1 would be arrested for their participation in the attempted murder. Young Sam was charged with the murder of Smalls. The next day, Beefy rounded up Fugs of Stonebridge members to go after St. Raphael's leader, Bucky. How does air up work? Simple. Through retro nasal taste, grab a- And I'm assuming this all is public knowledge, it's on the internet, it can all be found. To make an example, go after St. Raphael's leader, Bucky. This is because they wanted to make an example by going after the main figurehead at the time. The Fugs of Stonebridge member saw an innocent man named Kwasi Mensa walking out of a shop. They followed him and shot him in the head at point blank range. Another case of mistaken identity. A trend we are sadly so accustomed to. Come However, 2020, many CSB members were released from prison and held a block party to celebrate. A SOS member got word of the party and slid. The gunman spotted a CSB member along with his family and started shooting. The CSB member was shot in his arm, his wife was shot five times in the chest. And the most heinous crime of them all 
the two-year-old was shot in the head. Thankfully, all survived but had life-changing injuries. Oh, wow. The shooter was Crash Corn, who was charged with triple attempted murder. However, he beat the case due to insufficient evidence. Now talk about luck. Hey, no luck. He had a mask on. Huh? That can't be luck. But yeah, nah, that's crazy. That's an unfortunate event, man. That's why you got to stay away from this lifestyle, man. Kids getting hit, innocent wives. Look who you put in danger. You got hit in your arm. Look what your kid got. Look what your wife got. That's crazy. I'm sure you can imagine the sheer anger the CSB member was going through. It's one thing being shot, but to have your family, your wife, and your young child inflicted with life-changing pain, trauma, and injuries, I couldn't comprehend the level of revenge that he was contemplating. Now remember how this video started in Jamaica. Well, let's take it back there. As revenge for what Crash Corn did, his father was assassinated in Jamaica as revenge. An innocent baby and wife shot and now an innocent father was taken all because of what his son had did. This vicious cycle looks like it may never end. It just died. Nah, not with them kind of stats. It can't, unfortunately. And you know, all you can do is change your life for the better and try to move away from it, but it's tough. Eyes down for a bit, and until another event re-triggers it. How many lives taken, spanning through three different generations in three different countries? How many civilians were taken that had nothing to do with it? See, I don't like preaching as everyone already knows what the streets entail. It's either death or prison. And if you're lucky enough to make it out, you certainly don't without trauma and misery. What's the point of being the one who made it if you can't enjoy it with your friends? Because That's that survival remorse. A lot of people going through that, man. I made it up the hood and all your friends is either gone or they were locked up. That's survivor's guilt. If you like what I do, make sure you give this a like and subscribe. Plenty more to come in the future. Decent. Do you leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, man. I think this is the only video, man, because I'm sick. It honestly hurts to sit here more than 10 minutes. You know, like a whole body and whatnot. I'm gone.